we're gonna have a go at setting up the string height, sometimes called the action, on uh, on this bass guitar. Before we uh, get into actually doing anything, there's a couple of um, things about the the guitar neck that we need to know about. Um, one of them is called neck relief, and the other one is called fretboard radius. If you know about these things, skip forward. Um, so I don't want to preach to the choir, but um, if you don't know about these things, it's really important that you do know about these things before making any changes, any adjustments to the guitar. I'm going to talk about them because my video, like a lot of the videos on my channel, are aimed at beginners. So the the neck on the guitar. Okay, so this bit from from here to here. The first thing I mentioned was called neck relief. What is neck relief? Okay, so our guitar neck. It's a piece of wood basically, it's got the fretboard stuck on top of it, another piece of wood and then it's got these metal strings putting tension from one end of that piece of wood to the other end of the piece of wood. So imagine a bow and arrow, you pull back the string on your, on your bow and arrow and your bow is going to actually curve, it's going to bend, it's going to bow. I think that's where it actually gets its name from. So because metal's stronger than wood with the tension that's on these strings, particularly on a bass guitar, because these are big heavy duty strings, you're going to end up with your piece of wood bent in a curved shape. Now, in guitar design, the way to get around that is by having something inside the neck called a truss rod, which is a metal rod. It runs from one end of the neck down to the other, and you can adjust that and put tension on that to counteract the, uh, the force of the strings. The truss rod adjustment on, on this guitar there's a little, I'll take a picture and hopefully share that in the video because it's a bit difficult to see on here. There's a little uh, head of a bolt just behind the strings there that I can adjust with a, an Allen key or a hex wrench sometimes it's called to increase or decrease the amount of um, counter tension on the neck to, that works against the strings. Now this neck relief is quite an important thing because if we don't have that correct or if it's not right then we're not going to be able to set the action as we'd like it. So there's three ways that the, the neck relief can, can possibly be. So number one, we could have a perfectly straight neck. So from the nut to the end where the neck ends there, where it meets the body, that could be perfectly straight with a straight edge. So that's going to be completely neutral. That's one way to have your neck relief set. Another way is if the strings are pulling stronger than the truss rod, you're going to have a bit of a bow in the neck, and that's called an up bow. So if you will imagine, if the truss rod is loose and the strings are, uh, are putting a lot of tension on the neck, the actual neck, exaggerated, is going to bow that way. The third way and the final way is if the truss rod is too tight and it's pulling too much against the strings, we're going to have a back bow, so effectively our truss rod is going to be pulling the neck back like that, exaggerated again, against the force of the strings. So obviously that final scenario, you can see that if that's going to happen, the strings are just going to catch on the neck because the string wants to be straight, the neck's bowed, it's just going to fluff out in the middle of the neck. The first situation, the, the up bow, if our neck's curved that way, then we're not going to have the strings catch in, but the action is going to be terrible because the strings are going to be a long way away from the neck because particularly in the middle there's going to be a big gap because the shape of your neck is going to be like that whereas your string is going to be straight. So more or less our neck wants to be almost straight. I'm saying more or less and almost because there's a little bit of a quirk here. A string, when you when you pluck a string, same on a, a guitar as it is on a bass, it vibrates and it vibrates more in the centre of the string, which tends to be around here, than at either end. So there's more chance of hitting the fretboard and catching and buzzing at around this point on a straight neck than it is here or anywhere else. For that reason, a lot of necks are set up with the relief slightly bored, slightly up bored, to take into account the vibration of the string, particularly on a bass guitar, 
because these strings are fatter, heavier and move around a lot more than on a normal electric guitar. How do I know if my neck is bored one way or the other or straight? Well the simple way to check it is to have a look down from the body end of the guitar. I'm going to start down from there, down the neck, right down to the nut and you can see with your eyes whether or not the actual neck is straight and look at it across and on both sides. This neck is more or less straight with a slight up bow. I've not done anything to this, this is just how the guitar was and that's good news because that's how I want it to be. If it had been different, if it was backboard or not quite right, I might have had to make adjustments but I don't need to in this case. Maybe when I've finished adjusting what I'm doing, I'll check it again, maybe I might need to do, but at the moment I'm happy with, with how this is almost perfectly straight with a very slight up bow, which from my experience that's where I want it to be. So that's your um, that's your neck relief, that's one thing that we need to know about and be aware about because otherwise we'll never be able to set our string height action effectively um, where we want it to be. The second thing is uh, fretboard radius. The actual your fretboard, when you look at it across that way and sight it, it's not flat, it's got a radius to it. So you'll be able to see, almost like as if you're looking, looking across the surface of a ball, you can see it sort of disappearing away as you look like a curvature. So it's not a flat fretboard, it's got a radius to it. They're not all the same, there's different radiuses you can have. Um, they're sometimes different on guitars than what they are on basses. But the reason for that is it suits different players, the simple explanation. It suits dif different players prefer different, um, different radiuses on fretboards. You'll find that if you read interviews with professional guitar players and things like that. If you're an experienced player, you might have your own preference for how much radius you have on the uh, on the neck of the guitar. I don't want to go too much into the technical side of neck radius at the minute but the reason we need to be aware of it is because we're setting string heights we want our strings to be more or less the same distance from the fretboard across each of the strings. So if I was to set my strings to be completely flat across here they wouldn't match the neck radius so what would happen then is my outside strings would be further away from the fretboard than my middle two strings. So being aware of the fact that the neck is radius is useful when we're setting up these, um, these, these strings and the action on them. A professional guitar technician will have a tool called a radius gauge. He'll be able to check on any guitar what the radius is on the fretboard and then he'll use that same tool to set the correct radius across the strings. I don't have that tool so I'm going to use a combination of measuring the distance of each string to the fretboard and also my eyes and, and my feel and I believe I'll be able to do a decent enough job just by doing that without the need for those professional tools. The tech will get a better result than what I will but I don't have that, I'm not a tech. Um, you know, if, I'm, if I get a decent enough result I'll be happy. So those are two things we need to be aware of before we start actually messing with this thing. As I said in the introduction video to this series, one of the things I'm going to do before I move anything is take notes of where things are at the minute. So I've got again my trusty pen and pad ready so that I can take notes. In this instance I'm just going to take a note before I, before I do any uh, adjustments of the height of each of these strings and I'm going to measure that roughly where the, the neck joins the body at about this point. So for each string on this, it's easier on this because it's only four, not six. I'm just going to measure the height of the strings to start with. I'm going to make a note of that just so I know where this instrument is before I start doing anything. As I said in the, the intro as well, the reason I want to change this is I think the action is a bit high. So I'm going to be lowering the action. I'll, um, I'll get some close-up shots but... Uh, just to show quickly the, the way that I'm going to do that there's some little uh, set screws on here on the bridge of the guitar that I'm going to use and I'm going to adjust those to lower the height of the strings 
each of these strings is sat on what we call a saddle so it's got its own saddle and each of those saddles has got two of these little bolts one on either side and when I'm doing this it's really important that I'm going to adjust each bolt for each string the same so I'm going to start working on my, my fat E string so on the saddle just for this string it's got two bolts and when I start moving those I'm going to make sure that I move them both the same so if I turn one by a turn I'm going to turn the other by a turn if I don't do that I'm going to mess up the setup of the guitar in other ways so that's something just to be aware of as I say I'll get some close ups on that and I'm going to start uh, doing some work on this now first thing I'm going to do is measure the uh, the string height of each of the strings what I've done in advance is uh, just show you I made myself a little chart using my trusty little uh, pad and pen you can see I've um, I've put uh, each of my strings and uh, I've put some, some columns there where I can record some details what I'm first going to do is just record the string height and then underneath that I'm going to make a note of any adjustments I make so that if anything goes wrong I want to put it back I can uh, set it back later the way I'm going to measure the, uh, the string height I'm going to use this little guy, this is uh, basically a six inch long, uh, or 150 millimeter steel engineer's rule. You can use any ruler for this if you want to. I prefer to use a good quality one because obviously your measurements are only going to be as good as your, uh, your measure instrument. So these aren't expensive, I think this cost about a quid. So this is what I'm going to use to measure my, uh, my string guy. So what I'm going to do is back to the guitar. Again, I'm going to go from the point where the uh, the neck meets the body, which is about there in the centre of the uh, centre of the picture. It's it's about the the nineteenth fret there, we'll say. So I'm going to use my my ruler to come down the nineteenth fret. A little bit dark, so I'm going to use this, pop it on top of the fret there, and then measure the height. I'll. Um, I'll do the measurements off camera because I'm going to probably need a couple of hands and a bit more light but that's what I'm going to do for each of the strings on the guitar I'm going to record those measurements so I've got those that's my starting point before I start making any adjustments so I've just measured my action on this uh, I've recorded the results on my little chart there I'll uh, do a close up as I will with the, uh, the next bit but uh, just to let you know across the strings the action that I measured was about five millimeters, um, slightly more than that on the um, on the higher strings on the D and the G. Started off at five on the E and the A, and then went up a little bit. Now, in, in terms of actual measurements, it's not that important what the number is. I don't have a figure in my head of what I'm aiming for. I'm not trying to say right, well, I'm going to get this down to two millimeters or whatever height that I might have in advance in my mind. That's not what I'm uh, the way that I'm approaching it. Um, I'm, I'm going to go little by little, make small adjustments, and just try and lower the action a little bit. Because in my experience of playing this instrument, it feels too high, and if I can make it any lower, then that's going to be uh, a win for me. So I don't have a goal in mind as to how long I want these strings to be. I'm just going to try and get them a little bit lower than what they are now to make the thing more playable. And more comfortable for me. When we're lowering the strings we've just got to bear in mind we're going to have a bit of a, a compromise situation. The lower the strings are the more risk we have of creating what we call fret buzz. You might have experienced it on your guitar if the strings are too low if the setup's not quite right the, the string will buzz against the frets. It might not happen in every position on every fret it might only happen in certain places that probably comes down to the the neck relief aspect of it as well but generally speaking if the action is set up too low or, or lower than what the instrument can take you're going to be more prone to fret buzz and notes choking out and not sounding out cleanly which is not what I want to happen so I want to avoid that situation so I don't want to go too low that the strings are buzzing against the frets but I want to just try and get the action down a little bit and that's why I don't have a, a particular figure in my head this this guitar isn't the most expensive guitar 
Um, you sometimes find that with a with a cheaper instrument, it's it is more of a compromise to get this set up right. If you were to go out and you know and probably buy a professional level instrument for a lot of money and have it set up by a guitar tech, you'd probably be able to get a, a lot better action than what you would with an inexpensive instrument setting up at home. So obviously we admit that from the start. Before I start moving the, the nuts and bolts, another quick word about the action. It is a matter of preference, and it's also a matter of the style of music that you, you're trying to play. Um, I mentioned in the intro that I've got my electric guitars as set up as I like them, but the action on them is actually a little bit different for each one of them. The black guitar has got a higher action than the red guitar. The reason for that is the black guitar tends to use a general purpose guitar. I do use it quite a lot for lessons, so I'm doing a lot of chords, a lot of strumming, all kinds of stuff on it. Um, the red guitar, basically that, that, that's my toy, that's set up for, for speed and um, lead guitar playing, so the action is lower on that. It is also a more expensive guitar, so as I just said, it's probably easier to set the action more precisely on a, a higher quality instrument. Um, I also did a while ago a video, or attempted to do a video on playing slide guitar for that style. You probably want a higher action because you don't want the frets interfering with what you're trying to do with the slide. So there's no hard and fast rule, there's no golden numbers that I can give you, or your action needs to be 2.3 millimeters. There is no there is no fixed action setting. It comes down to what you are comfortable with and um, the style of music you're playing. So with that said, I'm going to get into um, making some adjustments here. When I make these adjustments, I'm going to be lowering the height of the strings. I'm only going to be working on one string at a time, so I'm going to start with the E string and see where see where that gets us before any other. The reason for that is the, the low string, the fat string, that's thicker, it bounces around more. That's, if any, is going to give me the problem with the fret buzz. So it makes sense to do that one first. I'll show you more clearly in the close-up, but the way that I'm going to do this by moving these little set screws on the bridge, when I lower this saddle, which is what I'm going to do to lower the string height. I'm also going to be reducing the string tension slightly, which is going to be lowering the tuning on the guitar. So whilst we're doing this, we need to have our tuner ready and we need to keep checking our tuner, make sure the instrument's in tune throughout the process. <clears throat> it's a bit laborious. We need to do it every time we make an adjustment, ideally, because if we're slacking our strings off, Remember what I said at the start, the bow and arrow, the neck's going to be pulling back and we're probably not going to get an accurate setting. So, I'm sorry if it's a bit of a hassle, but check your tuning every time you make a setting and make sure that the thing is still in tune because otherwise it's just, um, you know, you're setting yourself up for a potential failure. So it's important to, uh, to bear that in mind. Also, when I mentioned the fret buzz, check that as well when you make an adjustment. I'm going to start off by lowering this string, this E string, and make sure it's not buzzing. Okay, it's not buzzing in the open position, but again, it's going to take us a little bit longer. I'm just going to check when I play the frets, it's not buzzing when I'm playing on the frets as well. If we do this, then we're going to get a better result overall. So back to the uh, back to actual adjustments. So walking down at the uh... The bridge on this guitar to make the adjustments as i said we're going to uh I'm just going to look at one string at a time so the e string is what i'm going to look at first and you can see the base of the e string we've got this little uh saddle here that the e string sits on and on that saddle we've got these two little uh bolts one there one there and that's what i'm going to be adjusting in order to uh, change the string height now in this instance, I've said that I'm going to want to lower the string height. So in order to do that, I'm going to turn those bolts anti-clockwise, or if you're American English, counterclockwise, to uh, reduce the height of the string. As I said before, we need to make sure that we do the same adjustment to each one. So this bolt, I'm going to turn the same amount as this bolt. Simple way to do it probably is to... Uh, is to start off by turning it uh, by I don't know, half a turn or a full turn do the same for each one and then record as I said 
I'm going to do it on my little chart. I'm going to record everything I do. So, for example, if I turn these out by one full turn, I'll just put a minus one on my chart so I know exactly what I've done. Don't forget, what I said just before, once we've made the adjustment, make sure that we check our tuning and check our string to make sure that uh, we're not getting fret buzz you know, down the frets of the, uh, the string. The lower that we make the string, the more chance we have of uh, creating fret buzz. We don't want that. If we get to a situation where we've, we've uh, lowered it down and down and down and down, bit by bit, and then we start getting fret buzz, then what we need to do is raise that saddle up a little bit until the fret buzz goes away. So in which case, if we want to raise the saddle, then we're just going to turn those two same little uh, screws. We're going to turn them clockwise rather than uh, anti-clockwise, and that'll raise the string up again. So I'm just going to focus on the C string to start with, see how we get with that. And then uh, once I'm happy with that, I will have recorded how far down I've gone with it, how far I can get with it, and then I can do the same procedure across the other strings. As I mentioned, a professional tech will use something called um, a radius gauge to measure the radius across the strings. Because I'm making a recording of how far I'm dropping them, they should be about the same height anyway, they should be okay. And uh, just by checking it by eye and by feel, that's the method I'm going to use. That's not the professional method, but I don't have those tools, and that's what I'm going to go with uh, for these adjustments. Don't forget, check your tuning, and check your fret buzz after each adjustment. So I made all the adjustments now. It probably took me about mm, 15 or 20 minutes off camera, doing the uh, adjusting the little bolts there and checking my, make sure I've got no fret buzz, checking my tuning, all the things I talked about. The uh, result is positive. I managed to get the uh, strings lower down on the uh, guitar and the result of that is it feels better to play and that's the main thing. I mentioned that I was uh, making a record of the adjustments I've made, the measurements and things like that. That's just so that I know if I want to put the instrument back to how it was before I can easily do it, how many turns I've made and such. But just so that you know what I've done, I've done the adjustments I've demonstrated across all the four strings. When we started out, I was looking at, I measured five millimetres of, uh, of string height action across the strings, slightly more on the um, on the two higher strings, on the D and the G string, um, and I've addressed that as well, I'll, I'll tell you about that in a second. So, in terms of twisting these, twisting these bolts around that I showed you in close-up, I've done two and a half turns out on my E and my A string, Gradually, I didn't do all that at once, two and a half turns, I did, I think I did one turn at a time, one turn at a time, then another half a turn, and worked my way across. And I had an extra half a turn on my, I say my D and my G strings, so I know from my measurements that they were sitting higher than the other strings, I wasn't that happy about that, I wanted to try and get them all consistent, so that, that's what I've done. So, two and a half turns on the, uh, the fat strings, and three full turns on the thin strings. What I've ended up with is uh, a string height of about 4.5 millimeters, slightly less difficult to see on my little ruler. Um, again, you can get more accurate measuring tools than that, but for the sake of what I'm doing now, that, that's perfectly fine. Doesn't sound like a lot, I've only lost half a millimeter of height, but as I said, the action it's not a competition to get the action as low as possible. It's getting what you feel like you're comfortable with and you're happy playing with. 5 to 4.5 or slightly lower than 4.5 is what is about 10% reduction. So it's, it's not a bad reduction. Um, but as I said, the numbers, the, I've only mentioned the numbers so that I've got that record of being able to adjust the instrument back if I wanted to. They really don't matter. You might prefer five millimeters and you might be more comfortable with that and that's that's fine that's brilliant it's what works for you personally for me personally to get the instrument playing um as, as you want it to do i could probably have gone lower than this um i wasn't encountering any fret buzz whatsoever and um, i didn't have any problems i did check the uh, the neck relief you know when i looked down the neck 
to make sure that it was more or less straight so that was fine all the time I could have probably carried on adjusting but I got to a point where I thought well I'm quite happy with how this plays now so I'm you know I'm not going to bother changing it anymore at this moment I can always adjust it later if I want to another thing to mention now I've made quite a few adjustments to the guitar it's a good idea just to um, give it a rest for now let it settle leave it overnight retune it in the morning just you know it's made of wood and materials just let the thing settle because I've made some adjustments to it and then see how it is then but for now I'm, I'm really happy with the uh, the changes I've made because numbers aside forget all of those I can tell even though I don't play bass very much immediately it's a lot easier on my fingers to play obviously with a lower action that's what you're going to get no fret buzz so for, for the cost of what um, obviously I've been videoing this so it's took me longer maybe what 20 minutes 30 minutes of my time I've, I've transformed an instrument that was difficult to play to me in my opinion to something that's a lot more comfortable and easy to play I, I just feel a lot better about it myself and that's what it's all about make it um, as good as you can as comfortable as you can have I transformed it into a £5,000 custom shop guitar obviously not but um, I've made it in my mind. I, I can't I can't measure the playability. I can't show you that, but definitely take my word for it. It plays a lot better. So in the next videos in this series, I'm going to have a look at uh, intonation. I think I said and uh, pick up height balance. You know, so that pickups are producing the same output level uh, when you use the two different pickups. So this one has been a win in my opinion, and I'm looking forward to. Uh, doing some work on this guitar. Enjoy!